All right, what's up, guys? My name is Nathan French here at the Raw Truth um, Episode 4 team. I'm a raw athlete and revive athlete. I like to run, lift weights, and just do random shit um, to challenge my mental and physical. But yeah, I'm just curious to learn more about myself as you guys have questions that I might not have ever asked myself, so we can run over it right now. Question number one. What running shoes do you wear? I wear the Gel Nimbus E66. So they have like a, they have a gel padding and uh, the shoes are made so like when you run like longer runs, they're not gonna hurt your feet um, and they help your feet recover. And being 210, um, as a heavier person, you want a lot of gel and support in your shoes when you're running a long distance. So that's why I use those. Which Garmin watch do you use? Right here, I have the Garmin Phoenix 7X Sapphire Edition. It's got a little light, so if you run at night, you can uh, just like just in case. Like honestly, too, when you're in the like wake up in the middle of the night and you go to the bathroom, I just turn this on to find my way. So it's really it's really nice. Like I don't know, I don't use it for running much, but I use it a lot for like navigating through the dark at night in the house. Um, but yeah, this is Garmin. Garmin Phoenix 7X Solar Sapphire Edition. So also, uh, the solar, the light from the sun, powers the watch, so yeah. Fancy. Yeah. I like it. Are you adding swimming to your preparation for, one, for the 100 miler? Uh, so I might be. The only issue is like I have to really focus on running because I'm going to be running 100 miles. So swimming doesn't really help me, but I might use swim swimming as a recovery method. Um, but it depends on like what's more important to me, right? Like I could I could go swim, but the main goal is running. So I think I'm going to use swimming because swimming is great for low impact, and you can still work your aerobic capacity. So I'm going to probably swim on days where I can't run to really like still build the aerobic base, work on utilizing oxygen and um, building up endurance. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'll use it for if I need it. 100 miles, at what point do you get tired? And then how do you push past that? Uh, so I never ran 100 miles. The furthest I ran was 26, but it's, it's different. So like I did a marathon and I was probably the same weight maybe five pounds lighter, 205, I think. But I did, it was like as fast as possible. So I did uh, a seven, 7.30ish pace, I think, for 26 miles. So it was like as fast as possible. And it's kind of like an ultra, it's like, it's a journey. So it's, it's more about sustaining as long as you can go, not as fast as you can go. So it's more about preserving like your energy for the 100 miles. So you're not like full like sprint the whole way. It's gonna be like chill runs throughout the thing, maybe running and walking. Cause I'm in the Arizona desert, so I won't be able to run. At one point I have to go around Horseshoe Bend, which is near similar to the Grand Canyon. And uh, I'm gonna have to navigate through there. So I won't be able to run on the rocks, but a lot of the race is gonna be running, walking. But the way I'm gonna like kind of stay mentally locked in is uh, I think what I do is like when I run and I do these things is I look at it as like an adventure and each part, like every time I want to quit, it's almost like anything that you go through, there's always hard times and easy times. In my marathon, there's times where I wanted to quit. I gave myself five minutes of just pushing through that and I felt good. Um, so I think like the best thing and what attracts me to it and wanting to keep pushing is knowing that I overcome something that where I wanted to quit and it gets easier and better for me. And each time I push further into that, like wanting to quit, but overcoming it, I know I'm growing as a person. So that's kind of like why I do this and like why I'm excited to like run 100 miles is to just grow past like the feeling of like, I shouldn't be out here. I want to go home, but finishing it anyways, so. What made you want to get into running? Is there a particular person or maybe a sport that you played? Uh, I mean, I was a football player um, in high school and baseball. Um, I ran track, but I didn't even run. I high jumped. So like, I don't know what it was. It wasn't like a particular person. I think I just got so tired of just like weightlifting all the time. I wanted to still be athletic, like an athlete, because truly I love, ever since I was young, I always competed in things. So running kind of brought that athlete out of me. 
So it just keeps me like less bored and uh, feels healthy, honestly. I, I like it too, for that reason. So it brings me up to my next question here. When and why did you realize that hybrid training was meant for you? I realized it was meant for me when I think uh, mentally, I got kind of lost in like bodybuilding and just weightlifting because you're so self-centered on how you look all the time. You're not really valuing performance and like mental health necessarily because your mental health is kind of always dro driven into like how you look. And sometimes with, with life and, and uh, balance, like it's hard to, to execute every single day. And sometimes when you're off, it gets in your head more. So just being able to step away from just constantly focusing on aesthetics and, and weightlifting, I found another outlet where, you know, I could have a more balanced life. Like, hey, I might not be as strong and as muscular, but I feel more healthy. My mindset isn't so food focused. It's more performance, like to feel my body rather than, hey, if I eat this, you know, I don't know. I wasn't, I just kind of had to get away from just focusing on one area of my life. Um, and opening up to like what else is out there because I think a lot of people they think they, they fall into bodybuilding originally and they, they they just that becomes their identity and they don't know how to like get away from it so for me it was like I didn't want to be like that I wanted to be more than just someone who like lifts weights I wanted to be someone who shows other people like hey don't put yourself in a box like go try new shit and that was like why I did it so I love that and uh, what is your favorite cheat meal Ah, uh, shit. Um, honestly, anything with peanut butter right now, it changes. Like, sometimes it'll be peanut butter. Other times it'll be cookie dough. Like, it's bad. Like, anything that I do cheat on, it's pretty bad. But um, I try to, like, keep it. I'm, a, I'm pretty health conscious, so I try to always eat clean. But if I do eat anything bad, it's either, like, anything with a lot of peanut butter or cookie dough. So, so. sweet over savory for you. Yeah, yeah. Love it. When are you hosting your next run? Uh, I'll probably do the next one. Maybe like I want to do like I want people to come out. I'll probably do it in Texas because I'm running 50 miles to prep for my 100 in Texas around December. So I'll probably try and get people to just run 10 miles with me every loop. I'm going to go. I'm going to do 10 miles five times. And just if someone wants to join, I'll probably just throw it on my story and say, come run 10 miles with me. But. It's going to be at night. I think I'm going to run 50 miles. So I think because my coach wants me to replicate what 100 miles is going to feel like at night. So like when I, the race starts at 5 a.m. in the morning, most people get to 50 miles right when it hits dark. Then you do 50 in the night. So I need to, he said, I need to know what it feels like to be awake all day and then to run 50 miles at night. So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. Yeah. I think you have the watch. Yeah, I have the light. Like that's all I need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, last. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to finish. I'm gonna probably 20 something hours. Probably I'd say like 26 hours. Just nonstop running. Yeah. Wow. Slash you, like walking. But yeah. Well, what do you have to do to prepare for a run like that? Right now, I'm starting really slow. I'm 26. 26 weeks out, or no, less, 24. So right now we're just, I have six miles today. Um, each each week we build up our long run, so my long run Saturday. Um, I have three like normal runs. My normal runs are anywhere from five to seven miles. Um, and then my long runs are on Saturdays, and those will build up each week. So. Right now, last week I did 10. This week is half marathon, which is 13. Next week will be, I build 10%. So next week, will, after that week will be 15, 17, 20, 24, 26, 30, and 40, 50. After, after 50, I stop and I taper down. But yeah. What do you have to eat? I eat a lot. I eat a lot of healthy foods, a lot of protein to like keep on the muscle, a lot of protein powders, raw. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's actually bad how much protein powder I eat because it like, it tastes so good that I put it in everything. <laughs> so it, it, it's pretty bad, but I eat a ton of protein to keep the muscle on. And then I also eat a ton of carbs, um, but I'm gonna have to cut back 
because I'm 210 right now. I want to get down to 195 when I race the 100 to make it easier. So I'm just going to cut my carbs a little um, and my fats to come in pretty loose. A lot smaller on the race day. Uh, but yeah, I pretty much just keep it clean. Eat a lot of protein, um, healthy fats, healthy carbs, rice, pasta, a lot of beef, elk, deer meat, chicken, eggs, really like basic stuff. So, so how much is your grocery bill? I was pretty expensive. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably spend like a week, probably like 200 at least. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's expensive habit, but a good habit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I look at it as like, because I don't really have like lifting and like this is like my hobby. So like I would rather spend money on investing. Like I look at it as like an investment in myself, you know, because I look, I used to look at nutrition as like, ah, like do I really need to spend money on that? But then at the same time, I'm like, what you eat ties into so much how you feel within yourself. So I was like, man, like I could look at food and be like, I don't want to spend that. Um, but if it's healthy, it's going to get me to my goal and help me there. I'm like, I'm all for it. Um, but if it's not healthy, it's like, you know, why am I doing this? It doesn't really, it's not gonna help me get to my goal, so I'm not really gonna spend money on it. So, yeah, it's, and I don't eat out at all, really. I mean, I might eat out like once a month, but. So then outside of nutrition and working out, do you have any breathing routines that you go through to like help with the longevity of your runs? Uh, I don't, I've always, I've always kept it really simple. I'm like a pretty simple person. I just run, to be honest. Um, a lot of people, like, they make it like really articulate and it works for them. For me, like, I just came from uh, a background of just like, I worked construction and like my grandfather was very simple. My dad's like that. Like, I just kind of like do it. I don't know. It's really weird. Like, I get a ton of questions about like, like, cause some people, you can deep dive into like running and they get so complicated, just like weightlifting. But me on both sides of the equation, weightlifting and running, I keep it so simple to me. That's why I think I can do what I do is cause initially when you think of these things, like it seems so far fetched and it's so scary because people make it seem so difficult. But in my head, I simplify it so much where I'm just like, let's just run, finish the run increase the miles, I'm, I'm, di I'm gonna adapt, you know. That's just kinda how I do it. How do you get sponsored and partnered with Raw? Uh, I think uh, just being, I mean, we had, we had talked about this, like Merck and I talked about this and, and Vaughn, um, since we're all athletes, I think it's one of those things where it's like, you just gotta be yourself and you gotta, you gotta provide value to people other than just being like, hey, this is me, look at me, look how good I look. Like, provide context, like maybe share with them like how you build up your physique and not just like, it's almost like someone buying a car and just being like, look at my car, like look how great it looks, look at this, instead of being like, now this is what the car does, this is how it performs, it helps me like do this or that, this is how it, helps me with my work. I don't know, I kind of think of that as like your body, like people in fitness now, like they're just like, look at me, look at me, but they don't ever tell people like the journey in which it took the, to get them there. Like just like a car would take you places, like all they focus on is the look of the car. They don't really focus on like how the car got them to where they're at um, or the journey it took to maybe buy that car. And that's kind of like how I think of it. Like I have a, I have a build a physique, but I try to share with people like where I started, the habits I made, and the mindset that got me and helps me maintain everything, stay on track. Best way to stop snack cravings? Shit, I'm, I'm bad at this sometimes. Uh, I would say the best thing I learned is like, it kind of goes back to like what I said before on a, a podcast that Raw had, it was like, be the person that you want to be. So I always think like later down the road when I have kids or um, you know, I'm a father, and I, I think of this as like my dad, like my dad, like hearing him say something like, oh, like, you know, I want a snack so bad, or I need a snack, and I'm just like, I don't know, I just feel like as a father, I would, I would never want to have like not the resilience to be like, no, I don't need that. Like, I don't want to be a baby about it. I don't want to be like, like if my kids are walking by and they're like, like I don't want to be whining and be like, oh, I'm hungry, I need a snack. Like, I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I feel like as a father figure, I wanna, I wanna show them like, instill the right habits. And also, I look at my dad, like he was never whining about eating a snack after dinner. He was just like, all right, I eat dinner. Like, let's go to bed. Wake up for work the next day. Like, it's not like, oh, I need a snack. Like, he's not making it so like, I don't know. I think that's the way you approach it. Like, be the person you want to be. Like, if you, if you want to be someone who like struggles with their weight, I think a lot of times that happens because like they can't say no because they want instant gratification rather than long-term satisfaction. So that's the way I think of it. Like my dad, like that's what he, when he goes to bed, like he eats his dinner and goes to bed. Like there is no, oh, I need a snack or whatever. Um, he's just, he just does it. And I think it's cause like he knows like, and whether this is your goal or not, but if you want to get leaner or if you want to say no to snacks, you got to be like, is it worth this little, like very short term satisfaction for this long term, what it will do, you know? Um, I just think you gotta like focus on what really matters. Like you really need that answers probably now. Like just eat normally throughout the day, so. Are you planning a second tattoo? And if so, what would it be? Uh, yeah, I, I think I wanna get one after I do 100 miles. Cause that's like, a, if I finish the race, I want it to be, I wanna get a 100 mile tattoo. Just cause like, I'll probably, at that point, I'll probably have some some shit I went through. <laughs> so it'll mean a lot. I don't like to get tattoos that don't mean a lot like this. I have the power of French on my chest for my grandfather that uh, he taught me like, I put it close to my heart because he always said like, you always want to believe in yourself. And like he wore a shirt that said the power of French pretty much saying like, whoever you are, you just like believe in who you are. Like don't, don't believe in somebody else, believe in yourself. So that's why I have that there because it means a lot to me. Um, but if if I get another one, I want it to mean something. I don't I don't really want to put anything on that. Just kind of I want it to be different. So. Do you train with runs and weight in the same session? And if so, what do you do first? Uh, yeah. So I I do train if I have the time. I'll do I run in the always mostly run in the mornings and then lift in the afternoon um, if I have time. If I don't. I run four times a week right now because my priority is running. Whereas if my priority was lifting, I would lift five times a week and maybe run twice a week. But I run four times a week right now and I lift um, three times a week. So that's a seven day total. I don't really take any rest days. My rest days are lifting um, pretty much. Running is when I don't take a rest, so. What do you think about running in a weighted vest? Uh, it's hard. I did it uh, plenty of times. I have a. I did the Murph every year. Um, I actually didn't do it this year because of bodybuilding prep. I didn't want to hurt myself, but it's great for uh, what it does is pretty much it loads your body with a certain amount of weight. So if you can run fast and get adapted to like the weight vest and then you strip that off, you'll just, you'll fly because your body gets used to carrying around, say an extra 10 pounds, you pull that 10 pound vest off, it's like, you'll feel it right away. Um, so I think it's good with building up your your body to run, if that makes sense. But how many liters of water do you drink per day? I drink a gallon, so how many liters have you got? You're asking the wrong gal. Yeah, yeah. A gallon? Yeah, a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> how does protein coffee taste? Amazing. I just, uh, I just tried it. I actually, he, he was talking about collagen, and I tried it for the second time, and my protein coffee is really good. But uh, I love it. I'm, I get Starbucks. And if I don't get Starbucks, I make it on my own. I just, you gotta mix the milk and the protein separately or it'll get all, it'll get all clumped up and gross. You can't just dump it right in the coffee. It'll get clumpy and it won't taste good. So you gotta mix it separately and then pour it in. That's like the biggest mistake. That's, that's like the life lesson that you need. And then how do you grow bigger chest and biceps? Uh, just going, I, I personally believe, like I said, I'm very simple. I think incline bench, for chest, flies are my top two. Focus on those the most. Um, and then those are my two favorite exercises for that. Go heavy, still try to push a lot of volume. And then um, for biceps, I just hammer curls. That's pretty much it. Anything like weird habits or rituals? Oh yeah, I probably do. Um, it's gotta be weird. Like, I, I feel like I do weird stuff. Like, I'm sure if you ask my girlfriend, she'd be like, yeah, he does a lot of weird shit, but I don't know. 
Yeah, we can. That'd actually be good. Call her right now on speaker. Uh, yeah, you're on speaker on a podcast right now. Okay, quick question. Do I do anything weird? Do anything weird? Like, living with me. You can be honest. Like, be, be brutally honest. I just want to know. <laughs> uh, do I do anything weird? I'm just trying. You don't. You don't have to say anything of it. <laughs> I mean, you do a lot of weird stuff, but I'm trying to narrow it down to something good. Do I do anything weird at night? Or in the morning? <laughs> I'll, I'll think of something. I honestly don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, She's like, I can't share that for a podcast. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is weird, but, like, when I get out of the shower, I don't, like, so I'll dry off, but, like, I never dry off completely, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, like, some people make it apparent to, like, dry, like, Literally to like super dry like there's like you get out and you would never know they're in the shower like I like I'll come out like, ha- like <laughs> half soaked and I'll be fine with it I'll just throw on the shirt. <laughs> that defeats the purpose of a towel. <laughs> but I feel. <laughs> oh, she's calling me. Hello. She thought of something, huh? Okay, what is it? Every time you eat or drink anything, you have to. No, don't tell them that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. That's probably one of the weirdest things. I'm like, why does he do that every time? Oh, like, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Did you hear it? You like the bowl, too, and the cup that you drink out of. Yeah, yeah, like the, the shaker and the, the bowl. Yeah. I think I'm starving. I think it's from prep, like trying to get like the last bit of everything. But yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. I have one. <laughs> um, do you have any embarrassing songs on your playlist? Uh, I like Last Friday Night, Night by Katy Perry. Do you know what that is? By Katy Perry? Yeah, Last Friday Night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Last Friday Night. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like the remix uh, on SoundCloud. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but that's probably it. I listen to a lot of uh, like old rock, and um, I listen to like country music, which is really weird to lift. But I listen to podcasts too when I lift. Oh really? Yeah. You ever you out? sometimes? Yeah, no. What some, are you doing? Like all like nice and slow? No, like, dude. Oh, I feel like I feel like <laughs> chill. I feel like chill music actually helps me. Like I, it calms me down. I, sometimes I don't. Yeah, sometimes I don't want to be like, like, or like fired up all the time, you know. Uh, that is gonna be everything from the raw truth. My name is Nathan French, and I'll catch you guys um, not on this, but you'll see the next video. So, peace.